Well, we all love to capture a panorama of the Milky Way. So it's not too difficult. The trick is to stitch the images together after you've captured them. Now to capture the Milky Way, what I normally do is I start with my foreground. And I angle the camera, lens, camera and lens down. This is a wide angle 15 millimeter lens. And I angle the lens down so that I have about a fifth of the frame has the sky in it and the rest of the frame is my foreground. And then I start after focusing. Make sure your tripod's level, of course. After I've focused, I want to start by capturing a number of shots as I go around that overlap by about 50%. So you take your first shot, unlock the tripod, move until you've overlapped by 50%, take the next shot and just keep moving along. And your start point is just beyond where the Milky Way touches the horizon and finishes at the other end just beyond where the Milky Way touches the horizon. And after we've gone all the way around and done our foreground, we then elevate the camera. And with the camera elevated, so that we now get 5% of the, a fifth of the frame is the foreground and the rest of the frame is the sky. And we just go back, taking a shot each time overlapping by 50%. And what we want to do is at the top of the arc of the Milky Way we want to try and get a good fifth of the frame above the height of the top or the apex of the Milky Way. And this is important for when we start stitching them together as a panorama. So we've taken our images for me, it's not with this lens, it's normally seven images are required from here to here. I take seven images that overlap, and then I can stitch them together. So, I've got 14 images that I took the other night. Let's go back to the computer and stitch them together into a panorama. So we take our 14 images and using ice we're going to stitch them together into a panorama and then process the final image. So let's start with our 14 images in Lightroom. And the first thing we need to do is select one of the images and go to the develop module. And then if we scroll down, to Lens Corrections, and we're going to use the profile for the lens we've used. In this case, it's an IRIX 15mm f2.4 Firefly. And this will deal with all of the vignetting and lens distortions. And then we'll choose the last of our images, hold down shift and click. And then we'll click on sync settings, check all, synchronize. Now our images are ready for exporting. So while all of these images are selected, we can right click, go to export. I want to choose a folder, in this case I'm going to choose the desktop and create a folder called Panorama. And we want to export them as TIFFs. And make sure you leave a tick saying Save Transparency and click Export. 
here we have our 14 images exported as TIFFs and I've renamed them and given them a numbering system. We need to open up ICE. That's Image Composite Editor. Now ICE is free software and there's a link for the download in the description. We want a new panorama from images. We want to select our images from the top tier of our panoramic sweep and click open. And we're going to use auto detect. So we'll just click stitch. And as you can see, the automatic settings have chosen spherical as the projection, and you can see the stars at the top are smeared out. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose a different projection, and we're going to choose fisheye. Now this doesn't look so pretty in some respects, but as you can see, the Milky Way here, the arc of the Milky Way, is much more pleasing. It looks more realistic. And we've done away with the smearing of all of the stars around the image. So we go to Crop. And we'll select no crop and we'll go export. We're going to choose TIFF, but tick in include alpha channel, export to disk. And I'll call that stitched one. Save. Then we're going to click on import, highlight with a shift click all of our images, remove selected, go back to new panorama from images and choose the images from the lower tier of our panoramic sweep, open, stitch. Again, we're going to change from spherical projection to fisheye. And we'll choose crop. Make sure there's no crop. Export. TIFF image. Tick in the include alpha channel. Export to disk. And we'll call that stitched two and save. Now I've got both images open in Photoshop. And if you click on the magnifying tool and 
make sure you have them both fit screen. We can see the zoom value. This is at 13.5%. This is at 12.1%. So the lower number indicates that this is the larger image. So as this is the larger image, we're going to go image, canvas size, and we want to double the height of the image or the image canvas. So at the moment it's 24.26 inches. So we'll double that and we'll round it up to 50 inches and click OK. Fit screen. Now if we go back to stitched one, we want to select and select all, edit and copy. If we go back to stitched one, go layer, new layer, just click OK. And go edit, paste. And let's just use our move tool to see both of our layers. And what we want to do is you can see here on this image there is a stitching error that clearly shows the horizon is kinked there. So we're going to drag the lower layer up as such. And then we're going to reduce the opacity and using the move tool we're going to bring the lower layer up we're going to try and line it up with the previous layer and in this case I'm using the lights from the ships at sea there And then we'll increase the opacity again. And then, as you can see, the sky color is different here. So we want to remove that. Now, to get the sky blended here with the foreground, we're going to move the layers again because all we want is to sort out this issue so we have all of the sky here from this layer and if we zoom in this is where we have this stitching artifact on the horizon so add a mask by clicking here, select the brush tool and then a brush size around about this. We can start just gently brushing in the horizon from the lower layer. Now we've got the line of our horizon, holding down the Alt key, Alt, Alt key, click on the mask, and we're just going to paint the rest of the mask 
underneath that line, black. And we just want to paint enough of the mask. So if I hold Alt, click on the layer mask again. There we go. We just wanted to paint out enough of the mask so that all of the foreground from the lower layer has come through. And now we'll crop our image. So we click on the crop tool. We're going to bring it down and we're going to crop our image. Now as you can see, by using the fisheye projection method, we do have a small problem of the curve here, leaving a blank transparent area. And we're going to deal with that using content aware fill. If we click here, it's like flatten image. And then we'll just use the lasso tool and we're going to paint around and select this corner. And we go edit, content aware fill. And there you go, it's selected and filled in that area. Click OK. We'll go Control D to remove the selection. And we'll flatten the image again and we'll repeat the process. Okay, now that's all done. We just want to straighten our horizon. So we go back to the crop tool and click straighten, the straighten tool. We're just going to click and then drag a line along the horizon. There we go. Press enter. And done. The image is now ready for editing. We can now edit our image. And this is the final image after editing. Well, I hope this tutorial has been helpful to you, and if you've enjoyed it, please give it a like and uh, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.